Hi everyone, welcome back to Smarty Ink Workshop. Today I'm very excited because we are joined by Beyonce. And who doesn't love Beyonce, right? Like this mask was very fun to make. She took me a long time. That's why I'm a little behind on my video this week. But we got here, we arrived. She looks absolutely gorgeous and very realistic. And if Beyonce were to see her, I don't think she'd be angry because she is beautiful, even in a rubber mask. So there you go, Beyonce. Congratulations. Um, thank you for joining me again. I know that these videos are can be a little long, even though they're only 20 minutes in today's world. That's a long time. So I appreciate you taking the time to view them. And let's get to work. Enough with the small talk, because this was bomb times. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's get this party started by blocking out this form with some evenly measured out clay so we can have a nice even surface and not have crazy uneven areas to work with. I don't know about everybody else, but at this point, I'm super excited to see what this is going to turn out to be. Okay, continuing on using my wire tool and a few other tools I have handy here to get some fine details and work up these eyes and the rest of the face. I'll continue on here by assessing what I've done and checking out what needs to be addressed. Like, does she need more cheek or less chin or more eyebrow? So, so far, we need a lot of work on this mask. As a sculptor, I must admit that creating likenesses of people is one of the hardest things out there to do and one of the hardest things that I've ever done. But each time I make a mask, it gets a little better and you learn a little something. So as long as you keep growing and learning and everything looks better each time and each mask, you know that you're improving. And that's all that art is about, improving over time and practice and just becoming a master at what you do. I'd like to fast forward and see what 10 years of mask making will bring. Well, all right, we are nearing the end of the sculpting portion of this project. And so far, I feel like we have Beyonce here. So I'm super pleased. Let's move forward. All right, let's do some final cleanup of this mask and move forward with our mold. All right, and we're using Hydrocal as always on this mold. And we're gonna be doing our beauty coat with a chip brush 
getting it nice and even and building up a little layer and continue on with burlap and so forth and just layer after layer until we have a nice thick strong mold. In case you're wondering why the burlap, burlap is used to reinforce the plaster because plaster can crack in half just like that. So the more burlap, the stronger the mold. That's the main rule here. And when I'm finalizing the shape of the mold at the very end, I make sure to get a flat, sort of smooth top so that you can flip your mold and just rest it down and it stays balanced without tipping over or being uneven. So that's my tip of the day. All right, we're gonna use a razor and release the form from the mold. And here we have it, nice and clean. Just file down the edges and smooth it out so you don't get crusties falling into your latex or even cut your latex or yourself for that matter. Alright everyone, I'm so excited. We're finally here. The skin color. I've been waiting for this part because Beyonce has the nicest caramelly skin ever and I want to make it happen on my mask. As always, to create realistic skin, you must use a lot of different colors because skin has blues and reds and yellows and greens and oranges and all the tones in the rainbow so here we are applying different tones warm tones and deep tones and some highlights to get a nice realistic effect i don't know what color we're going to put on her lip at the end but i'm going to add some peach so that we have a nice starting point and of course add some peach and red pink tones around the eye because we all have that in our eye sockets and if you don't believe me look in the mirror and here you have it a nice beyonce skin color so let's get to adding some shadows and some contours and some blushes and everything else Now, disclaimer here, I have three spotlights and a ring light on my work area. So the color looks a lot lighter than it actually is on camera. So keep in mind, if you're ever creating a likeness of someone, that the person on the picture of the reference you're using can be under 10 spotlights. So always remember what someone's true skin tone might really be. And if you don't know, do some research. That's why we have Google. Now we're going to pull out all of our warm tones in the Pan Pastel collection and warm up her skin and really make her radiate because that's what she always does on camera. Don't you, Beyonce? My go-to pastel shades are 
violets and browns for eyeshadows because they go well on most every skin color I've made so far. Even green Gamora. So like, they really look beautiful, they look natural, and they're hard to detect. Unlike other colors, they really stand out and just look fake. Alright, let's get to painting these beautiful hazily colored eyes. We're going to start off with some lightest skin flesh shade by, by Gay Hope Paints for the eyes because that's the one I like to use. And we're going to add some eyebrows with some light brown and some dark brown. Do some combination and get it pop. The eyeballs are going to really bring this to life because these masks look completely strange with just a black hole and a white iris or a white scalera. Again, we're using Vallejo paints to continue painting the eyes and I'm using olive color, brown color and like a camel color combine them and mix them up until I get the right shade that complements her skin just right. All right, let's have a blast applying these lashes here and bring her to life because lashes always do so. As you can see here, what a difference it makes. Anyone remember the game Operation? Because that's what I feel like I'm doing. <laughs> Not so fun. <laughs> now I decided to make a portion of this video in real time so that you can see that we're not always just blurring through the process it does take quite a bit of time and concentration to get this done right so my advice is to never rush a mask no matter how long it's taking How freaking satisfying are lashes, people? Come on, you can admit it. I mean, OMG, come on now. Beyonce! I was about to give her a red lip and then I just said, no, nope, we're going to go with the gloss. Keep it popping. Now I had to reach out to the big guns for advice on the lip color. So I want to give a shout out to Tess and my mom. Thanks guys.
seriously that lit. I'm about to go work at the Met counter, people. Retiring from masks. Breaking news. Wow, everyone, this mask is giving me Beyonce realness. Like, she needs hair now. Never seen Beyonce bald for so long. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us on another mask making adventure. This time with Beyonce Knowles. And we all know that we love us on Beyonce. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, I always hope you learn something or take something out with you that you could use when you're making a mask. If you are making a mask or applying a lash or even a lip gloss. Come, come on, ladies. This looks a lot better than what I see out there on the streets. Let's get to it. Our... All right. Thanks again, guys. Have a good week. And we'll see you next time with something really cool maybe some gore and some more all right take care bye